Right, I had a couple of videos for the week uh, all lined up. I even shot and recorded them. Uh, but things have changed and I'm going to end up doing this. So basically, I was going to do a video on the Schrade Walston home. So Schrade owned George Walston home briefly and they brought out a few knives. And it's a little rabbit hole I went down and I, and I picked up a few. Uh, well, I've got two. Uh, I've got one on the way and I've got this one. So we're going to put that to one side. I'd already shot and recorded the video. Um, but it's kind of shown this and uh, long story short it's being scrapped and we'll come back to it so what I'm finding is there's so many twists and turns to a lot of the knife history and sometimes I'll record things and then I'm not happy with it and I, I want to sort of revisit it but um, I did a, a sort of a review on this uh, and I wasn't very complimentary of it um, and it, this is a Joseph Rogers Barlow, and a lot of you guys in the comment section said you need to contact them. Now, I didn't contact, this is an SFO, so this was a special factory order by the Level Collective, and they're kind of just um, sort of in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the mix, really, but not really the person that I had the issue with. So, and, and really, I'll be honest with you, not a company I'm that... In, I'm a knife guy, so I, I want to talk to these directly. And I did, um, on your say-so, and I'm really glad I did. And it's sort of, it's opened up a whole avenue of um, history and all sorts. So I didn't really look into it as much as probably I should, but um, we're going to go over it in this video. So uh, essentially, I started off doing a video of these two because they're sort of, uh, linked, but we're, we're just going to focus on, on this knife, but not just this knife, we're going to focus on the Egerton group, uh, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put some pictures on from their website of some of the stuff that they're making now, and we're going to talk a bit about the Egerton group, but right, we'll talk about, so I, when I called up to talk about this knife, right, as well, I'm going to keep this knife, I'm not going to return it, um, I'm, there's a few little issues, there's a bit of gap in, there was a bit of rubbing on the blade, uh, and just a few, you know, um, little gripes with it. Uh, my main issue was the sharpening was a bit uneven and it wasn't sharp. Um, but I can soon put an edge on this. No issue there. So, and I'll do a little short of that. I'll put a nice mirror uh, edge on it and it'll look smart and I'll do a YouTube short for it. But that's not really, uh, I'm sort of digressing here. I want to I wanna delve a bit more deeper into the Eggington group. And that's who I called. So I'm going to put a picture on some eye candy while I'm talking. So um, Ian Rankin, um, he's commented a few times. I've spoke to him a few times. He's on the Discord. Uh, really good guy. He brought to my attention this gunstock pattern. So let's put that up there. And this thing is so beautiful. Uh, it really is. Um, look at that bow wood. And it's in a, in a, a spear point, which I love. The only problem that's stopping me from picking this up, it's £225, guys. But this is the sort of stuff we can expect from the Egerton Group now. And so, right, let's talk about the Egerton Group while we all drool over this knife. But um, So basically, the Egerton Group is probably more known for sharpening equipment, sharpening steels. Uh, they've been going around since 1872. And it's pretty much, uh, they can sort of follow the lineage of their family from generation to generation. It's always stayed uh, within the Egerton group. There was a little period where the daughter owned it and she married a guy, but then their son took over. So it's really like a family run business. And it has been since 1872. And they've been a really proud and prominent part of Sheffield history. And basically what happened in the 70s and the 80s, uh, if I just get rid of that picture now. So I was going to do a picture, uh, uh, sorry, a video on this. And this is the, when Schrade owned George Walsenholm briefly. Now I've got another knife coming. I'll do a separate video on this. Uh, the other knife is a lot more better condition and uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a sort of a stopman. But we'll delve into that a bit more deeper on another video. But right, I'm going to just put some other pictures up from... Um, the Eggington Group official website of what they're selling now. So we'll just have a bit of eye candy while I sort of go on about them. So they started in 1872. It's a family-run business. They've been, at, like I say, a big part of the Sheffield uh, cutlery industry throughout that time and works alongside these companies. They are sort of offering their sharpening steels as part of like a, 
uh, a cutlery set. Some of the cutlers have um, manufactured handles for some of their sharpening equipment. So they've had a really good relationship with these companies throughout the years. So in the 70s and 80s, the Sheffield cutlers really went into decline. They had uh, That's where Schrade bought them and, and other companies uh, took a bit of interest in them. But thankfully... Uh, the Egginton Group sort of saved them all. That's the way I read it uh, and the way it looks. And, and the Egginton Group, being a Sheffield company, um, came to came to their aid, really, and they bought out the company. So the companies they bought were Joseph Rogers, George Iberson, uh, George Wollstonehome, um, and William Rogers. So they, they bought all these companies, <clears throat> uh, and they all fall under the Egginton Group now. So, and that's why it's called the Egerton Group. It used to be called Egerton Brothers Limited before that, but now it's the Egerton Group. And it's just a brilliant story, really, uh, and a really nice thing to have happened. And um, now we've got all these brilliant companies that fall under this one group. Now, they've got this official website. Uh, a lot, and again, I'm very new to this. I've only been collecting for five, six years, and I love the history, and I love... Uh, I love Sheffield knives in general. I love all different knives around the world, but, you know, I've got a soft spot for Sheffield knives. And I owe a lot of um, what I'm learning and picking up from uh, sometimes just you, like the guys in the comment section and, and people like Drew White, um, you know, Ian Rankin, people, they are, are telling me, and I'll show you a book that I've just picked up recently on Drew's uh, recommendation. But, um, yeah, so I've, hopefully I've, put a load of nice knives out there um they're definitely a website i'm going to be like looking at religiously now um they they are quite pricey some of the pieces but um what we'll do i'll i'll, I'll get a few and we'll, we'll hold them accountable and we'll make sure that quality control is is spot on so i called them up i called them directly and i spoke to a guy called james goodwin who's part of the sales and well he is the sales and marketing and i absolutely chewed his ear off and it was a really good conversation um and he really did humor me because i was on the phone for ages so it i appreciate your time and speaking to me and he was really accommodating and what you'll find with a lot of these sheffield companies because they were relatively small they're small it's a small manufacturer and if you take michael may he's one of two people in his company um and and they're really accommodating really personal so if you call them and you've got an issue um but what what um james did say to me was that because I bought this from sort of a third party company or sorry, yeah, yeah, essentially it's an SFO. So it's a special factory order. So I would have to initially take the issue up with them and obviously it would come back to them, which is, is, is you know, the, the normal course, I suppose, because you never know if that damage has been, you know, it sort of happened whilst it's been with them. But yeah, it's just a natural chain, but they're very accommodating. They, they really do care about the products they're putting out and they care about what people think of their knives. Um, and like I say, it's a very historic and, um, you know, brilliant, uh, historic and brilliant cutlery scene and they don't want to let it down. So it was a really good conversation I had with him and, and I will be watching his site religiously. He he does keep up to date with YouTube and a lot of the social media Um he uh, brought Slick Slices up, Eric, and I couldn't speak more highly of him. And I sort of pushed him in his direction. I said, he's the guy sort of to go to. He's the one that sort of got me into Sheffield Knives. Um, he's, he's a wealth of knowledge, uh, you know, uh, and he's the guy you need to speak to. He's the guy that will, you know, showcase your knives if you, if you wanted to, you know. But anyway, right, so... I just wanted to do a bit of a recap, really, and talk about the Egerton Group because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm learning as I'm going, guys, and I'm learning about the history and everything else. So, But I've really enjoyed speaking to James, and I like to say, I think that site's amazing. There's some brilliant pieces on there. So, Right, uh, I just want to give a thank you to Drew White. Like I said earlier, he... Um, let me just zoom out briefly. So what I've found with this channel is trying to find history and some information on... Um, knives is sometimes far and few between and sometimes you get conflicting information online and on knife forums and things like that but i what i'm learning now the best information is usually in books um and you'll find more factual information in books so uh, this is one that drew white mentioned um i it's literally just arrived this morning mate but um 
already I, I can tell I'm going to love it. Um, it's just filled with um, loads of information. I've had a quick brief uh, and there's some excellent, um, there's a lot of work and drawings in here and uh, just, it looks spot on, mate. It does look brilliant. So I'm quite looking forward to reading this. It's not a, a massive book, it's, um, but yeah, I, I can't wait to uh, sink my teeth into that one, mate. But um, And on, on the sort of uh, discussion of books, um, I was having a look at uh, Stefan... Schmolus, I'm going to really butcher that second name, but we all know him as a YouTuber, a knife YouTuber. He's got a book out called uh, Pocket Knives for Gentlemen. I was looking at that on Amazon, uh, as you do, and I was checking the uh, sort of reviews of it, and I seen Terrell Schneider uh, <laughs> bought it, and he left a review. So I contacted him because he, he leaves a few comments in mine, and we, I think we all know by now he's not too well. So prayers and thoughts to Terrell I uh, hope it's all going well, mate. Um, he actually uh, commented back to me, which I really do appreciate that. And I, and, I, and I know, I think he was in the hospital at the time, mate. So I appreciate that, mate. And prayers and thoughts go to you. And, you know, positive thoughts go out to you, my friend. Um, a few, uh, while I've got you all here, a few videos coming up in the future. Uh, the travelling knife has just arrived on my doorstep. This is from MB underscore EDC. And uh, really looking forward to carrying this one, to be honest. It's uh, a modern interpretation of a Barlow from Real Steel. Um, there's a bit of information about it there. So it's got a pocket clip. Um, there was a lot of um, attention about this when it first came out. Uh, I'm part of a Discord and a lot of the guys uh, went and bought it. I, I didn't, um, but I'm looking forward to carrying it and giving it a whirl. Um, so, yeah, so, look forward. I'm looking forward to doing a video on this. Like I say, I've got another Schrade and Walter home knife coming. I might do a video just on books because I've, I've purchased a couple now and uh, I've got a few already in the collection. So, I'm dying, absolutely dying. So, I'm really getting into Robert Class. Uh, really enjoy, um, really enjoying some of their knives. And um, I hope to do a bit of a, um, a video on them really because uh, I just love them. And I, there's a few that I bought recently, a really good price as well. So, um, and it's a, it really is a nice carry. I've just had bought this beauty, um, which is a case teardrop. Uh, it, and it's unusual, it's got the PV, uh, what do they call it, PVP or PVD coating. Um, but this thing is absolutely, the fit and finish on it is is spot on. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, really enjoying carrying that one at the moment. I want to do a bit of a video on the uh, German Swiss Army knives. Um, got a couple of these in the collection, um, and I quite enjoy. As you can see, they're a bit battered. I used to carry these quite a bit, but the knife laws have changed recently, and I think it's uh, slightly over what we're allowed to carry now. But yeah, just a bit of a, a channel update and um, talk about uh, the Eggington Group and a bit of a thank you to a couple of guys out there. And uh, all the best, Terrell. Thoughts and prayers to him. Um, and I'll see, I'll see you on the next one. I hope everyone's doing okay. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'll get a video out soon. Oh, one more. <laughs> Just before I go, I totally forgot. So um, I'm going to start doing videos on, on everybody else's sort of collections within the community. Anybody that wants to get involved. So I'm starting with Roland Brandt. Um, you you all probably seen him on lives or in the comment section and things like that. He has got an absolutely crazy, insane collection. Uh, he sent me a few pictures. Uh, I'll do something similar to what I did here, where I'll just be putting pictures in and we'll be talking a bit about the history and things like that. So hopefully I'll have that out soon. Uh, bear with me, Roland. Uh, I want to do you justice, mate. I've asked him a few questions as well about you know sort of his favourite knife patterns, how long he's been. Uh, collecting for you know tips and tricks for uh, people like myself and you know it's it, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it and make it a bit of a, like a little mini series in the in the channel um hopefully like I say I'm, st I'm still trying to get to Sheffield I'm trying to make contact with a few of the Sheffield manufacturers uh it was really good speaking to James Goodwin hope to speak to him in the future maybe pop around and see some of the plant the workshops and things like that so right thank you all for uh 14 minutes in I think we've covered everything uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.